on, this is the first thing you're going to see, which is the My Game section. Uh, I'm going to show you, too, the lap board that we use, because obviously this game is intended to be played in the living room or a family room, whatever the case may be. Um, so what you're seeing right now is the phantom receiver, um, and then also the lap board, which is the user interface that we're using, and then you also get one game pad controller um, when, you, when you subscribe to the service. So all this will be included in the packaging? Yes, absolutely. And the way that it is uh, set up right now is that it's a subscription-based service, uh, what we're asking for is a two-year commitment, $29.95 a month. For that, you receive all the hardware that I just showed to you, and you're also going to receive a selection of games that will be equal to the value of the $29.95 a month. Uh, so, you just sign up for the service, is there a price, what's the price for that? It's free. Oh, it's free, so just... Yes, hardware is free. Um, the reception so far has been really Sorry, great as far as... What's the commitment of time? Yeah, it's 24 month commitment. The 24 month commitment. Yes. And then for the people that either don't credit qualify for a 24 month commitment or choose not to go for a 24 month commitment, can also go on a month to month basis, and they would purchase the hardware then for $199. Okay. Um, and then every month that they're uh, under subscription with us, uh, they can continue to re receive content. If they stay with us for 24 months, then we would be crediting back the $199 purchase price okay. that they laid out. And the details on how we'll do that will be available in August. Who made the hardware? Um, this is all prototype hardware that we created ourselves. Obviously, this is a game controller that we uh, bought from someone else, and it's obviously been done to match the rest of the system. Good chance that this could be a little bit different when we launch in November. Uh, but what you're seeing here in its basic form is going to be just about the same. The receiver will shrink in size just about an inch, so it will be on the Z-axis. Uh, much shorter. Can I get press photos? Press photos available with this hardware. Um, actually, I think I may have emailed them, but if you didn't get them, then um, I think you can email okay. them. Okay. Right I mean, day. I can take a picture now, but I'm sure you're yeah. 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 But Let's take a look at the, the controller for right now. Oh, sure. Let's get um, give a handle on it. For E3, we didn't enable the controller because most of the games that we're demoing right now are uh, PC-based games and require a keyboard and mouse. But the controller, the final control will have like six face buttons? Well, that hasn't been fully determined yet. Um, it's going to be very similar to what you're seeing there okay. um, in form factor, but button layout, button arrangement, so forth will still be a tool right now. Okay. This is a little bit of a placeholder for three I'm sure. to show what it is we're providing for the 2999. Any, any plans for uh, analog sticks on there, or is that, are you actually aiming not to do that and have the mouse be more? kind of analog controller. Well, we're doing studies right now with um, focus groups to understand what sort of interfaces that they'd like to see. Um, one reason that we're using our own interfaces as opposed to making it an open system for any interface to plug in is compatibility issues. What we're trying to create here is ease of use, plug and play capability that's really not there for PC gaming. You know, obviously there's drivers involved in PC gaming, uh, DirectX problems, things like that. We're trying to get rid of all those things and make it easier for the Will, um, in addition to gaming content, then uh, do you plan to have like downloadable like upgrades to the, the system yes, so that absolutely. like you know like you talk about DirectX? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Because we're always connected to the broadband connection and we're connected to our back end servers, we'll be able to update not only the games with mods, uh, patches, whatever the case may be, in real time as well as streaming in the background. Uh, but we can also update the, the software and the OS as, as needed. So that it's always up to date and always compatible. Um, one thing, too, that I'll point out from a hardware perspective before we get into the UI demonstration is the lap board. And what you're seeing here is the lap board sort of in a stored position. When you're getting ready to play, all you do is pull up on the lap board. It allows you to move the mouse underneath. It also rotates 360 degrees so that right now it's set up for right handed play. Since your hands are turned in a little bit, it allows you to turn it in for more comfort when you're playing. If you're left-handed, all you do is flip it around, and you can play left-handed as well. So depending on the, the end user, uh, we can set it up either way. Obviously, this is a wired peripheral right now, uh, but at launch, we'll have uh, wireless op options available as well. Will that be an additional? Yeah, option? that will be an accessory. Any price point on the wireless or no? Excuse me? Any price point on the wireless? Yet? Not yet. Okay. That will be announced at a later date. Okay. So I'll go
go ahead and get into the, the UI interface. As I said, this is the uh, My Game screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out of this. And I'm going to go into, first of all, My Shopping Area. And what we've done is we've created uh, uh, channels, if you will, that allow us to view by genre the types of games that are available. So, for example, we put in a sports, a strategy. There may be first-person shooter, role-playing, that sort of thing. The one that we've created for E3 obviously has content in there specifically for this show. So if you look around in here, there's a, a good cross-section of content. Um, all of this is obviously just for E3. This isn't um, what we'll necessarily launch with, uh, but all those announcements will be made in, in August. So none of these games are confirmed? They're not officially confirmed for launch, no. But um, if they're running on it right now, doesn't that kind of suggest that they will be confirmed? Well, I can't, I can't really say that. Okay. To be fair. Would, it be, would you be surprised if these games were launched? <laughs> It'll be announced in August. All right. Okay. Um, so, as I said, we have a, a good selection of games, a little bit of everything here. Um, obviously, first-person role-playing type games. We also have kids' games. Uh, because, as I said, if you go back and we look at profiles, there's a profile which is my profile, the dad profile. There's also a Timmy profile, which would be maybe my five-year-old son. So games that I can play and games that Timmy can play. If we go into my profile, you'll notice that it's password protected. So I've got to put in my password. That allows me to get into my game section. What it also allows me to do is manage my credit card information if I'm downloading and buying games. It allows me to manage the, uh, the parental controls on Timmy's as well. Um, will the parental controls be uh, in conjunction with the ESRT range? Yes. And they'll basically sort by M, T. Exactly. The parent basically goes in and says, Timmy can only play E rated E rated or he can only play E and T rated E. That's right. Right. As Timmy gets into his teen years, then you can open the parameters a little bit wider and let him play some more things. The ESRB is more important. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. What we'll do, and I don't have that in the demo today, is we're going to carry that ESRP rating through. Today we put in placeholders and they say G, P, G, R, that sort of thing. So we just put in some placeholders for the show today. Uh, so. As I said, getting back into my menu section, then uh, once again, my games, which we just looked at, I can shop, I can go to setup. There's also a messaging section that will be available. And although this may not be available right at launch, it's something that's going to follow close on the heels of that. So the forums that are out there, uh, the ability to chat, inbox, to send messages back and forth to, to your friends that are playing online. Um, will, will you be able to... The shopping is, is, yes. is, that, is that where you buy your games? It sure is. And so, are you going to have other retail partners um, for other types of shopping? Um, we won't probably directly at launch. Right. That's something obviously that we're working on. So, you know, I mentioned the content will be announced in August, but we're also going to announce the partnerships that we have as well. So, retail partners, um, online partners, potential broadband partners, that sort of thing. So, again, we'll go back into the purchase section. As I said, we put in placeholders. The price is listed right over here as free, and then all the content in there is available. One thing that I'll show you too is there's a plus and minus key. There's a plus and minus key on your keyboard, which is purposed as well, in the white keys. So if you push on more, you're going to get a brief description of the uh, game that's showing. And as you scroll through, it'll change obviously with that game. If you push that again, it'll give you the ability to sort by rating, by price, whatever the case may be, game title. So since we're not doing any of those things, we'll go ahead and pull that away. Let's go with uh, Orbit's a kid's game. If I click on details, then it goes to my options of what I can do with this game. Again, giving you a little bit deeper description. You can press the plus menu, get some screenshots of it to see what it looks like. Press plus again, you'll get reviews of it from online magazines, from regular magazines, whatever the case may be. And also, if this game were available to try, you'd be able to push that and go through a demo. You'd be able to click on rent if it's available for rent. In this case, what we're doing is we're showing the subscribing process. So if you click on subscribe, it's going to go ahead and contact our servers, stream the game downline, onto the box itself. So now it's residing on our hard drive. What we're doing is we're taking the code, though, and breaking it up in a logical format so that it streams more accurately, also streams faster but it also gets you into the game quicker, so we're streaming just enough to get you into gameplay, and then as you're starting the game, the rest of it will stream in the background. So as opposed to sitting around for a half an hour streaming, let's say it takes five to 15 minutes to get into Unreal Tournament, the rest of it will come down. Okay, so you won't actually be storing the games that you own on your hard drive? Yes, you will. You will. 
if you will, the hard drive sporting gig hard drive. So the games that you've purchased will be largely stored on your hard drives. What we're doing at the, in the background as well is managing that hard drive so that if you're reaching the saturation point and you've bought so many games that they're in there, we're going to be pulling back games that you haven't played in a while. So if it's been three or four months since you played Orbits, we might pull that off to make more room for the next purchase that you have so your gaming experience is faster. Okay. Because it's instant on then once it's on your hard drive. So then you would pull it off your hard drive? Yeah, we'd pull it off and keep it back in our server. Service. It's still yours, so anytime you want to play it, we'll, we'll bring it back up and allow you to do that. How are you guys administering your own services? Because if you keep getting more and more games over a period of years, I mean, your server, Absolutely. your load of, of your package is yeah. huge. I mean, I mean, if it's successful, it's going to be, you know, well, like right. you want it to have like a million games, right? Yeah, so, obviously what we're doing is we're building the network so that it's very functional today and very scalable as well. Um, the chances are that the majority of that will be outsourced, so we're going to go with somebody that's well known in the industry that can handle this. Okay. About here, oh, that's good. I was just letting you know they were here. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. So what, we're doing, what I'm going to do really quick here is show you the profile section now. If we go to Timmy's, you'll notice the music changes, the background changes. We still have a plus and minus button here because we want to condition Timmy to use that plus button. But if you push his button, it doesn't bring up any information because he's five years old and can't read anyway, so what difference does it make? But what it does is just launches some animation and so forth like this button that's going to fly around. He's five, he likes to look at stuff like that. How many like custom kind of desktops are you going to have? Well, our plan is to have skins available and continue to release those over time. So you're going to be able to skin your own area. Um, in this case, this is made for a young five-year-old. Right. Ours is real simple because it's a developer dad. Right. Um, there might be some real cool Matrix-looking things for your teenage son who likes to play first-person shooter games. So, as you can see, just the two titles that would be rated E for everyone are available in Timmy's profile. He's not able to sort through and find anything else. So if you went ahead and click play it, go right into Varmint and go from there. What I'm going to do, though, is go back into mine and show you that there's a number of titles available in mine. Varmint's and Orbits, which were there before for Timmy's, obviously, are going to be there because I can launch from here. But you're also going to see UT4 in there. And those are the three games that we have right now. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and start playing. UT. It takes it a moment to, to load, just like it would on a PC, uh, but then the gaming experience will begin. What I'll do is hand this to one of you guys if you want to try out how the keyboard works and feels. I recommend that you sit back and set it on your lap. Instant action, that's the fastest way in. Sure. Um, and then just grab one of those and play Deathmatch is pretty fast to load too. Now this is stretched right now, are you guys going to be supporting 16 by 9 Yes, we will. Any game that's uh, obviously works on a 16 by 9 will work right on the system. What you're seeing right now is a DVI connection from the box to the plasma screen. There's also component video for HDTV or Progressive on there. Uh, there's optical going from the box to the stereo for uh, 5.1 surround. There's also stereo connectors, RCA connectors in the back. And there, there's also an Ethernet interface, obviously, for your network connection. So you primarily aiming then, uh, if something releases on PC, you guys are going to try to get that? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Any, any other, like, are you anything much like Mac? Not, not currently, no. This is a PC-based gaming service. It's based on uh, XP embedded, um, so it's an open system for PC type games. Okay. GeForce card in there, 5700, 
Um, so that's going to be doing the conversion for us. Uh, How is this going to look at a, a standard tube television? Not well, HD. obviously your your uh, resolution is going to go down on the standard tube TV, but the experience would be good still at the same time. Um, uh, what I've seen is it looks you know less sharp than it does here. You yeah, a lot of texture I mean, and a lot of shading on this. It looks really nice. This, this is neat. This is the optimum, right? Yeah. We have a plasma or on an LCD screen with uh, Miller, you're not really that good at this, are you? No. <laughs> That's okay, I'm not very good at it. Now, you've got USB connections in the back here? Yes. Are you forced to use the, the Phantom mice, or can I, say, have a wireless Microsoft mouse that I want to use instead, or, you know, a different... Yeah, we're going we're gonna to release those details, like I said, in August. For the prototype version, we went with standard connectors, obviously, because of the cost of prototyping. Uh, there may be the possibility that we use... Um, specific connectors for the Phantom itself. And what we're trying to do, like I said before, is make it as easy to use as possible. If we allow anyone to plug in, then we have to provide drivers for that, manage those drivers. Right. So if we control what devices plug in, we can control the user experience better. Um, you, you anticipated this initially that your software selection is probably going to be more PC skewed than console skewed? It's going to be all PC skewed. There will be no console games on those. Okay. So, so no, it's basically like, uh, you're trying to expand the PC gaming market, essentially, yes. not try to go after the console That's market. correct. That's correct. Yeah, we're not trying to compete against what? Sony or right. you Sorry, go ahead. Are you planning to have people develop ex eventually exclusively for the Phantom? There's a possibility of that, okay. sure. But you're starting, in general, looking for developers to... Yeah, and the reception of developers has been incredible so far. When they walk in and see how well the game plays, what it looks like, uh, they're excited about it. Do we need development? No, we don't. Okay. Um, I'm wrecking your whole thing here. No, you're fine. Oh. That. So that can be a double edged sword, always. I mean, sometimes when you have to depend on third parties to provide all your content, are you worried that if your install base doesn't get up there right away, that, you know, is there a risk that publishers just, you know, ignore it? Uh, are you? Are there any plans for to do internal development for the Well, there's no plans today, uh, but it's definitely a possibility. I mean, we're not closing the door on any decisions like that. Any time I need your team, you yeah. Oh. Play this Have you talked about any price point on games? Um, it's going to be very similar to what you would find in retail. You can now retrieve the Nexus you know, missiles. Do they say out there that this switch is for left? Yeah, it sure does. It feels nice, right? I mean, you're like, Are you left handed? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No, I just suck. It's going to say all this. Rotates 360 degrees yeah, and yeah, brings yeah. the mouse to the other side. That's cool. That's a very good idea. 